welcome to this review of my SIIG Mini Touch, which is actually not an SIIG Mini Touch, but a Monterey K110. The Mini Touch is a rebranded version of an otherwise identical keyboard, recognizable by the SIIG Mini Touch badge in the top left corner. As far as I know, that's the only thing that's different between the two. The thing is, this keyboard is known almost exclusively by the Minitouch moniker, so even non-SIIG, non-Minitouch models are generally called that, including the listing for this one. Someone was nice enough to proxy this from the US for me. It came from a small cache of 27 of these on eBay for a very reasonable $35. Although apparently the seller took offers of $14 or even $10 for them apiece. This one was $21 shipped to my proxy, an absolute steal if you ask me. Especially as this one is brand new in box, don't you just love that? When it comes with the original box and the manual and stuff and it's all super pristine and shit. Thanks again for snagging this one for me, Mike. The box is, in fact, very unassuming. All it says on it is keyboard and it confirms its model K110 with the stamp on the front here. So over the coming weeks, I'll not be doing exclusively, but will be looking more than normal at space-saving keyboards, and this one is a great one to kick off with. I've been wanting to review a Minitouch for a while now, and I've had a fair amount of requests for it, as it's both a relatively well-known and definitely a well-respected vintage mechanical keyboard. It uses a 75% form factor, which is a compromise between a 60% and a 10 keyless. You can find 75% form factors with quite a few different layouts, but they generally share the same objective, trying to fit as many buttons into as little space as possible, adjusting the layout where necessary. This is in contrast to both the 10 keyless and the 60% layouts, which usually try to save space purely by emitting buttons without otherwise touching the keyboard layout. Hence, the result is a keyboard with as many as 81 buttons in a size only barely bigger than a 60%, including arrow keys and generally most nav buttons as well, but at the cost of having some keys smaller or in different places from where they'd normally be. There is a numpad present on the main keys which you can access using the FN key, but to be honest I think that's kind of pointless. I really like working with a numpad, but not one like this where all the keys are a bit slanted and you need to press another key to access them. So I just use the number row and I don't bother with the numpad. The FN key is also used to turn the arrow keys into a nav cluster, which does make a lot of sense actually, and to access F11 and F12, which are on the F1 and F2 keys respectively. There are some rather weird things about the layout, for example they included a small big ass enter key on it, and they shortened the keyboard by half a unit on the left so that the tilde key couldn't fit here, so they stuck it on the right above insert and delete, but this is where some of the nav buttons like page up and page down normally go on many 75% layouts, so they have this one key position left which is kind of wasted. Now, none of that really bothers me, but the thing that does is that they stuck FN on the space where control normally goes, and it's really in the way there. I use control a lot for gaming, and I'd much rather they have control in the corner and then the FN key next to it. Things I like about the layout is that you get so many keys on it for so little space, that the delete key is in a very prominent place, the small big ass enter is actually kind of nice, and the idea of using the function layer over the arrow keys for the nav commands is much better than that of most 75% layouts in my opinion. Other common 75% vintage boards, like this KPT84 and this Cherry G84, both do have the control key in the corner, but they use a less useful system for the nav commands, which are separate buttons in a not hugely logical order on the right side. I prefer the Monterey system. I also like the delete key in that position over there much better, I use that key very often. Another improvement I can think of is a stepped caps lock key to avoid accidentally hitting it. I think this is a good thing to have in general, but I found that having a small keyboard layout made it easier for me to do wrong, so it would be especially welcome on this. Overall though, for a space saving keyboard, which I <laughs> normally don't like at all, I think this is pretty okay. If you're going to go small, I'd say you retain quite a high level of functionality with this at a relatively low cost and with a very large size reduction. Second is the switches. Oh man, the switches. 
They are SMK second generation switches, Clicky and Alps mount, also known as Monterey switches, because they were first reported in a Monterey board, although not this model, and Monterey didn't actually make the switches. Monterey's are by far the most well-known member of the SMK second gen family, and they're easy to recognize by their pale blue, partly translucent rectangular slider, although some people accidentally mistake them for Blue Alps sometimes. I've reviewed Monterey switches a long time ago in my sixth ever review over two and a half years ago. I loved them back then, and I still do now. They're honestly some of the nicest switches I know. They're kinda light at around 60 grams of force, only a hair heavier than MX Blue, but they feel very smooth and their tactile bump is exceptionally crisp and clear. Sharp and very noticeable, but not overpoweringly so. It feels extremely refined and delicate, so much so that these actually make me type lighter and in a very relaxed way. Now, personally, I would rank these above White Alps, which are a little stiffer and more clunky, but below Blue Alps, which are beautifully balanced and also very smooth and crisp. Monterey's also make a pretty good and again quite refined sounding clicky noise, and in fact this particular chassis really brings out the sound very well in these. Now, normally Monterey switches sound a lot less bassy than Alp switches do, which is probably because Monterey switches use a really tiny clicker and Alps use a massive one. But in this particular small chassis, the Monterey's really sound very nice, as opposed to Alp switches, which tend to sound a little bit better in large keyboards and roomy cases. Still, ranking just below Blue Alps is very high praise in my book, and what's better is that these are generally much cheaper to get hold of, not to mention they're nowhere near as sensitive to dirt and dust as the picky Alps are those little divas. The Mini Touch could also come with Alps clones, which aren't as good as Monterey's, <laughs> or as Alps for that matter, but I think the majority of these that I've seen use Monterey's. One thing that's basically inherent to keyboards with Monterey switches is that they're built like crap though, and this one is no exception. It's very, very light at just 700 grams, and it's plasticky and thin, and it flexes a fair bit considering it's such a tiny board. But that said, although it's light and flimsy, it doesn't look terribly cheaply made though. It comes with a fairly short cable with a 5 pin DIN plug, but no ATXT switch that I could find, so it appears to be an AT only board, which would make sense because it's from the 90s and by that time the XT protocol was kinda old already. It uses small flip out feet at the bottom, and what looks like an RJ port for some sort of terminal connector, which together with the small size makes me wonder if it was designed with some kind of specialty workplace in mind. Overall, the build quality is kind of crap, though not the worst for a Monterey board, and I think it does look pretty good, wouldn't you say? It's got a really classy, timeless design and elegant styling in my opinion. Another thing they skimped on is the keycaps, which are thin, lasered ABS. Now, that's not as bad as, for example, pad printing, but it's nowhere near as durable as dye sublimation or injection molding, and it doesn't look as good as either, too, especially the double shot keycap on the left, which is just a standard focus keycap. They're pretty good for lasered caps, but ABS yellows with time, and what's worse, although that Alps mount, which is not the most uncommon mount around, granted, so many of the keys on it are a non-standard size, a shape, or even row that it's hard to imagine where you'd source different keycaps from, except from perhaps another mini touch, really. So, unless you plan to replace just the alphanumerics, pretty much, these are the caps you're gonna have to make do with. For example, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I mean, where in the world are you going to source a one and a half unit caps lock? Uh, one is it 1.75 unit shift key or a one unit tab key with this thing poking at, at the top from? Anyway, honestly, if you're looking at space saving keyboards, have a think about getting one of these. As far as space saving goes, this one is pretty usable in my opinion, and the switches are just a delight to use. I think Monterey's are one of those switches that any keyboard enthusiast owes to themselves to try at some point.
If you can't get one of these, there's also the Minitouch Plus, its successor, which was a rebadged BTC5100C, although that one is known mostly by its original name rather than its Minitouch name. That one is also a 75% keyboard, but with BTC dome with slider switches, which are some of the best rubber dome switches ever made. Anyway, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.